Hey, it's time to see food, the big ugly formulas. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the one you see here, D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. <clears throat> and the first thing we're going to do is the easier set of see food on this one. And that is if a problem tells you that an object starts at rest and the initial velocity is zero, uh, this formula becomes a bit simpler because VI is equal to zero. So VI times T is equal to zero. And the formula becomes the shorter D is one half a t squared. So if you're doing a problem where a car starts from rest or a rock is dropped from rest, this is the simpler version of the formula. Okay, so how do we see through this for a and t? Let's do them one at a time. We'll do a first, and then we'll do t. All right, to see through for a, uh, I have to get rid of the one half and get rid of the t squared to get the a, by, a all by itself. Remember the order for see through is first of all get everything on one line. That's been done, uh, and then. Uh, isolate the thing that you want to isolate. Uh, so to get rid of the one half, we multiply both sides by two times two, and we get two d is a t squared. And then to get the a by itself, we divide each side by t squared, and you end up with those canceling, and a is equal to two d over t squared. Okay. Uh, on the other side here. And we're going to solve the same formula for t. And again, I'm going to do what, what I did before, multiply both sides by 2. So you get 2d uh, equals a t squared. And now I'm going to isolate the t squared by dividing each side by a. And I get 2d over a is equal to t squared. And now I can square root both sides and get my final version t is square root of 2d over a. All right, now let's take a look at the original formula if you don't have initial velocity is equal to zero. So I'm going to rewrite the same formula down here in green for some reason. d is b i t plus one half a t squared. And if we are not starting from rest, if we need to solve for vi or a, how do we do that? Let's start by solving for vi. Uh, all right. Now, in this case, this is one of the rare formulas where we have terms added to each other. And so the first thing we have to do is get the term with our unknown in it, which is the vit term. I've got to get that by itself. And I do that by subtracting 1 half a t squared from each side. So I get d minus 1 half a t squared is equal to v i t. So this is the one additional step. And so you get the term with your unknown in it all by itself. Now we proceed by normal means, as we say. I want v i all by itself, so I'm going to divide each side, all of each side, by t. They cancel, and I get v i is equal to d minus 1 half a t squared, all divided by t. And I'm just going to leave it in that form. Uh, if you really want to, you can separate that into two terms. I'll just say, which is d over t minus 1 half a t, if you really want to, but you don't have to. Uh, you can just plug numbers into that first version inside the box. All right, the very last thing then is I'm going to take the same formula. I'll write it again. D equals V I T plus one half A T squared. And I'm going to solve this for A this time. Okay? Uh, the eighth term, the term with A in it is the one half A T squared. I want to get that term all by itself. So I'm going to subtract V I T from each side. And I have d minus v i t is one half a t squared. And now I proceed by normal means. I'm going to get the a l by itself by multiplying through by two and dividing by t squared. You know what I can even do in this case is just divide by one half t squared. That's completely legal. It's going to probably make this a little neater looking. Uh, my one half t squared goes bye bye, and I get. A is equal to D minus V I T over one half T squared. And we're done.